here on the waters of Brentwood Bay, a dedicated team of volunteers stands ready to respond to emergencies at any moment. These are the search and rescue volunteers. They play a vital role in keeping boaters safe. Our mission, number one mission is to save lives. So that'll be our number one priority. After that, we'll try to uh, mitigate issues with uh, personal property. So boat, vessels, docks, um, because of the possibility of fuel spill, oil spill damages and stuff like that. Suzanne Pettigrew is one of the many volunteers who dedicate their time and skills to search and rescue. A former 787 captain, Suzanne shares what it takes to become part of the team. Yeah, it, as, as a captain, as a pilot, I was uh, trained to, to manage people, manage situation, manage risk. And this is really what, what we do on the boat. You manage situation, you manage risk, you manage people and you want to make sure that everybody's trained to what they need to do. You have to have clear communication so people know what is expected of them. And if they, if they, they, they have doubts, they, they can voice their concerns, so you have to be receptive to that. So the communication background that I've had as, as a pilot and as a captain working with crew, it's all transposable here and managing risk, whether you're in the air or on the road or on the water, it's the same thing. You look at where's the risk and how you can mitigate each risk. Can you add more people? Can you um, delay an hour for the weather system to go by? To become a volunteer, individuals must undergo extensive training and meet specific qualifications. It's not just about boating skills, it's about being ready to face any challenge at sea. Obviously, training plays a huge role in all of this, Suzanne, and um, you spend probably, and I guess it, it's a good thing, more time training than you do responding to emergencies. Yes, you train for all possibilities, all in the eventualities, and uh, you hope that when you do get a call out, um, your training can kick in and uh, you follow procedures and checklists that we have and uh, at any time on the boat there's always a minimum of two crew, three crew, five crew sometimes might be there and at any time people have an input on the situation. With no two emergencies alike, the volunteers need to stay sharp, vigilant and always ready to spring into action. Search and rescue volunteers operate on the front lines, often in challenging conditions. But despite the risk, the reward comes from knowing they've made a difference. So if somebody, a boater, has run out of fuel, run out of gas, and they're drifting and they may end up on the rocks, or somebody may have fallen over water, on the water, and somebody sees them and they're saying, hey, we just saw a kayaker turn over and uh, the people seems to be having difficulty getting back on and they're floating around, uh, they will call us. So usually within 15, 20, 15 minutes we're on the boat, another 15 minutes we might be at the boat or the kayaker and, and rescue, at, you know, in our, in our further region. Uh, we're able to assist them. What are some of the most common things that you see from a, a safety perspective um, that you kind of go, oh boy, like, that could be a problem? A lot of people have a plan A. They don't have a plan B or C. And they think, oh, we're going to go to this beach, we're going to have a wonderful afternoon, because it's nice right now. So they're not looking at the weather ahead. Oh, the wind's supposed to shift. Oh, the tide's coming down. We've got nine foot uh, difference. Um, do I have the proper anchor and, and thing? Uh, the weather will change. The water is cold. It might be warm, but the water is cold. If you do fall in the water, you have to figure out how you're going to back on the boat or how you're going to manage to stay safe. So a lot of people have plan A and they think, we're just going for two hour cruise or three hour cruise and things change. And so they don't have a plan B to say, okay, um, do I have a fully charged phone? Do I have a spare fuel on board? Do I have food, water, sunscreen? It's uh, simple things like that. Uh, and uh, I guess perhaps the biggest thing is making sure you're always wearing your, your PFD. That's a biggie. And we always go with our PFD and it doesn't matter if you know how to swim. If, if you do fall and, and you hit your head or within a few 
15 minutes, you might lose dexterity. You might not be able to pull yourself up back on the boat. For Suzanne and her team, the waters are just a little bit safer thanks to their commitment and skill. If you are interested in volunteering for Search and Rescue or want to learn more about their life-saving work, visit their website. Suzanne, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for this and uh, continued uh, success with not only the training, but uh, let's hope you don't get too much real action out there. I, I... No. <laughs> All right. The training action is great. Okay. Thank you very much. That's it for us uh, on this episode, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors. <laughs>